Yashar, Jasher 16. At that time, Kidor Lam Omer, king of Elam, sent to all the neighboring kings, to Nimrod, king of Shinar, who was then under his power, and to Tidal, king of nations, and to Aryak, king of Elakar, with whom he cut a covenant, saying, Come up to me and assist me, that we may smite all the towns of Saddam and its inhabitants, for they have rebelled against me these thirteen years. And these four kings went up with all their camps, about 800,000 men, and they went as they were and smote every man they found in their road. And the five kings of Sidam and Amorah, Shenav, king of Adma, Shem Ever, king of Sevoim, Bera, king of Sidam, Bursha, king of Amora, and Bela, king of Soar, went out to meet them, and they all joined together in the valley of Sidim. And these nine kings made war in the valley of Sidim, and the kings of Sidam and Morah were smitten before the kings of Elam. And the valley of Sidim was full of lime pits, and the kings of Elam pursued the kings of Sidam, and the kings of Sidam, with their camps, fled and fell into the lime pits, and all that remained went to the mountain for safety. And the five kings of Elam came after them and pursued them to the gates of Sidam. And they took all that was there, rather, all that there was in Sidam. And they plundered all the cities of Sidam and Morah. And they also took Lot, Avram's brother's son, and his property. And they seized all the goods of the cities of Sidam, and they went away. And Eunuch, Avram's servant, who was in the battle, saw this and told Avram all that the kings had done to the cities of Sidam, and that Lot was taken captive by them. And Avram heard this, and he rose up with about three hundred and eighteen men that were with him, and he that night pursued these kings and smote them. And they all fell before Avram and his men, and there was none remaining but the four kings who fled, and they went each his own road. And Avram recovered all the property of Sidam, and he also recovered Lot and his property, his women and little ones, and all belonging to him, so that Lot lacked nothing. And when he returned from smiting these kings, he and his men passed the valley of Sidim, where the kings had made war together. And Bera, king of Sidam, and the rest of his men that were with him, went out from the lime pits into which they had fallen to meet Avram and his men. And Odani, Sedek, king of Yerushalayim, the same was Shem, went out with his men to meet Avram and his people with bread and wine, and they remained together in the valley of Melech. And Adoni Sedek blessed Avram, and Avram gave him a tenth from all that he had brought from the spoil of his enemies. For Adoni Sedek was a priest before Elohim. 
and all the kings of Sidam and Amorah were there with their servants, approached Avram and begged of him to return them their servants whom he had made captive and to take unto himself all the property. And Avram answered the kings of Sidam, saying, As Yahuwah lives, who created heaven and earth, and who redeemed my soul from all affliction, and who delivered me this day from my enemies, and gave them into my hand, I will not take anything belonging to you that you may not boast tomorrow saying Avram became rich from our property that he saved for Yahuwah Elohai in whom I trust said unto me you shall lack nothing for I will bless you in all the works of your hands and now, therefore, behold, here is all belonging to you. Take it and go. As Yahuwah lives, I will not take from you, from a living soul down to a shoe tie or thread, excepting the expense of the food of those who went out with me to battle, as also the portions of the men who went with me, Enar, Ashkol, and Mamri they and their men, as well as those also who had remained to watch the baggage. They shall take their portion of the spoil. And the kings of Sidam gave Avram according to all that he had said, and they pressed him to take of whatsoever he chose, but he would not. And he sent away the kings of Sidam and the remainder of their men, and he gave them orders about Lot, and they went to their respective places. And Lot, his brother's son, he also sent away with his property, and he went with them. And Lot returned to his home, to Sidam, and Avram and his people returned to their home, to the plains of Mamre, which is in Shevran. At that time, Yahuwah again appeared to Avram in Shevran, and he said to him, Do not fear, your reward is very great before me, for I will not leave you until I shall have multiplied you, and blessed you, and made your seed like the stars in heaven, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And I will give unto your seed all these lands that you see with your eyes. To them will I give them for an inheritance forever. Only be strong and do not fear. Walk before me and be perfect. And in the 78th year of the life of Avram, in that year died Reu, the son of Peleg. And all the days of Reu were 239 years. And he died. And Sarai, the daughter of Haran, Avra, Avram's woman, was still barren in those days. She did not bear to Avram either son or daughter. And when she saw that she bore no children, she took her handmaid, Hagir, and rather whom Pharaoh had given her, and she gave her to Avram, her man, for a woman. For Hagir learned all the ways of Sarai as Sarai taught her. She was not in any way deficient in following her good ways. And Sarai said to Avram, Behold, here is my handmaid, Hagar. Go to her that she may bring forth upon my knees that I may also obtain children through her. 
and at the end of ten years of Avram's dwelling in the land of Canaan, which is the 85th year of Avram's life, Sarai gave Hagar unto him. And Avram hearkened to the voice of his woman Sarai, and he took his handmaid Hagar, and Avram came to her, and she conceived. And when Hagar saw that she had conceived, she rejoiced greatly, and her mistress was despised in her eyes. And she said within herself, This can only be that I am better before Elohim than said I, my mistress. For all the days that my mistress has been with my Lord, she did not conceive, but me, Yahuwah, rather Yahuwah, has caused in so short a time to conceive by him. And when Sarai saw that Hagar had conceived by Avram, Sarai was jealous of her handmaid, and Sarai said within herself, This is surely nothing else but that she must be better than I am. And Sarai said unto Avram, My wrong be upon you, for at the time when you did pray before Yahuwah for children, why did you not pray on my account that Yahuwah should give me seed from you? And when I speak to Hagar, rather Hagar, Hagar in your presence, she despises my words because she has conceived and you will say nothing to her. May Yahuwah judge between me and you. For what you have done to me. And Avram said to Sarai, Behold, your handmaid is in your hand. Do unto her as it may seem good in your eyes. And Sarai afflicted her, and Hagar fled from her to the wilderness. And an angel of Yahuwah found her in the place where she had fled, by a well. And he said to her, do not fear, for I will multiply your seed, for you shall bear a son, and you shall call his name Yishmael. Now then, return to Sarai, your mistress, and submit yourself under her hands. And Heger called the place of that well Be'er la Chai Roi. It is between Kadesh and the wilderness of Bered. And Heger, at that time, returned to her master's house. And at the end of days, Heger bore a son to Avram. And Avram called his name Yishmael. And Avram was. Eighty-six years old when he begat him.